been quite a while but we're back with another video for Marvel's Avengers in this video we'll be talking about the new Mega Gear that you get from the Super Adaptoid and Mega Level Threat we'll be talking about how underwhelming it actually is how important it is that we get better gear going forward and how we can actually improve it as well on top of that I'll very quickly talk about the difficulty of the Mega Level Threat because it seems that it's either too easy for many players or it's actually too hard and I've got a pretty funny clip to show you in regards to it being too easy if you missed the stream we've done for it. Now one thing I'll say as well before we do jump in, uploads have been pretty sporadic for the last month, it's because at the start of the month I actually got COVID and it completely floored me so I had to isolate in just a single room for 10 days and on top of that I was off work for a few weeks there because I was completely floored by it. I still very much feel that like my brain's not working at 100%. I've heard some people talk about a kind of foggy brain syndrome they get after it. I do really feel like I'm suffering from that to an extent, so apologies if at any point in the video maybe isn't as clear and, and concise as I normally am, but that's why I've not been doing many uploads. However, saying that, the plan for August, we've got War for Wakanda coming out, I'll be doing a ton of content on that, I'll be doing Guides for Black Pan for Foggy Brain or not, I'll be looking to do that, and then we've got Future Revolution coming out on the 25th, and I have a lot of content planned for that as well. So that's what will be happening going forward, even though we've had a little period there where things have been pretty quiet. Now let's jump in and let's look at this gear you can get from that mega threat. So what I've done basically, I've been onto Discord and I've just captured various different tool tips and we'll talk about the, the perks and again how underwhelming they actually are. So the big theme you'll notice with these perks, and they're mainly based around the cosmic status effect side of things. Now with the perks as well, they are random, which means I can't do any infographics for them. When you had the Mega Hive, you would have three perks that were set. Now that is perfect for a gear piece that you can only farm once a week, because you've got a 1 in 4 chance of getting the gear piece you actually want. Now the way it works with that Mega Level Threat is you will get two gear pieces that will actually drop, but the perks are all random on them, so it's just far too much RNG here, and then on top of that as well as I've already touched on the perks are really pretty underwhelming as well well but let's actually run over why they are underwhelming so starting off with the top one here and we've actually got the slightly same status effect for perks one and three it's just different how you actually proc it so there's a chance a successful parry grants a cosmic surge buff with this when you're dealing damage where the buff is active I think it lasts about three seconds or so so it is really short but dealing damage where the buff is active restores a small amount of willpower and heroic energy it's a tiny amount. This could potentially be pretty interesting on maybe a tank character, but they need to up how much you actually gain from this. I don't know if it actually stacks, I'm pretty sure it doesn't know. If we look at perk 3, you can see you've got a chance taking any damage, grants the cosmic surge buff. Looking at the second perk in this one here, and this is absolutely terrible design this. Uh, it's a 62% chance when reviving a down teammate to generate a temporary or cosmic energy restoring willpower to any teammates within range. When you're playing hard content, you don't want your teammates to get down. Yes, it's nice to get a buff from them when they're back up, but you should never have anything designed around your, your teammates or yourself actually being downed. That, I just don't see the sense in that at all. So that's the first piece. As mentioned, underwhelming. I could see some use of the Cosmic Surge buff if it was actually buffed a lot more than it is at the moment. With this next item, there's actually nothing interesting going on here, and I'm pretty certain all these perks are already available on different gear pieces, but I want to show off for the fact that there's nothing interesting going on here, and again, bear in mind, at the moment, you've only got your, your chance once a week to actually get two of these items on one hero. So you've got Targeted Graviton Explosion, that's a perk that's already in the game, you've got the Range Power Attacks, Deal Particle Damage, once again that's already in game, and then the third perk is a Chance Taking Damage triggers a Damage Explosion, once again something that's already in game. You'd never take anything like the Damage Explosion or the Graviton Explosion above your, your Damage Buff or the Invincibility you can get on Crit, for example, or Defense Buff you can get on Crit, so yeah this is a particularly bad piece here, but it's really great in really proving the point that the, the perks here are really pretty awful. So this gear piece here has a perk that just absolutely blows my mind that they would put this in. It's the top one, it's Cryo Lethal Protection. So with this is a, in this instance, 37.9% chance defeating enemies afflicted with the Cryo status effect grants a defense buff. Now currently in the game you can actually get items that will give you a chance defeating enemies 
by any attack. It doesn't have to be a specific status that may actually be hard to apply and you have to defeat them specifically with that status. But in the game at the moment, you already have perks that allow you to defeat any enemy and that will grant you the defense buff. Why would you want to go for one that's so situational and that you have to actually apply your status effect first? And on a lot of enemies, depending on how well geared you are, you may actually defeat them before you're able to apply the status effect, making this perk completely useless. This is just awful. There can be no defense for, for taking existing perks that are actually in the game and then adding an additional condition on top of them. So you've got the fact there's only a chance for it to proc, but on top of that you've got the chance you need to apply a status effect as well. This is absolutely terrible. No defense of it can be made at all. Looking at the, the third perk on this, the Braze, Brazen Cosmic Surge. This one here again, it's Cosmic Surge it's using. It's actually on Melee Crit. We've never seen that before. Has the potential to be interesting, but we need to see Cosmic Surge actually getting buffed first. With this gear piece here then we have another existing perk that was in game where it's been added with a new condition to it and again a condition that's arguably worse than the ones we had in game so it's Cosmic Lethal Empowerment a 1 in 3 chance defeating enemies afflicted with the Cosmic Status effect grants an Intrinsic Burst Intrinsic Burst can be actually being great on, on some heroes it can give you like infinite missiles and Iron Man and so on but at the moment in game you can get this on range crit and if you're Iron Man that would be preferable but with this here it's again defeating enemies but you need to apply the status effect first and if you're fully geared out you'll actually be defeating enemies before you apply the, the status effect so I just don't get what they're doing with this now with this gear piece here we have a potentially interesting perk, it's the Cosmic Protection, so with this it's a 30% damage reduction for any cosmic attacks and it's not actually propped by anything, you don't need to take damage, it's not a reactive buff or anything like that. This I actually like, this is probably about the, the only one that I do actually like. Very conditional, but in future if they bring out loadouts and we have maybe certain bosses we go up against that might do like a high amount of cosmic damage and it could be useful to have different loadouts with different pieces of gear where you get a flat damage reduction. So this is actually a decent perk. It's nothing groundbreaking, but in comparison to the other perks, it's probably the most interesting one. With this gear piece here, we actually have two decent perks, but we have one awful one as well. So you've got Ionic Revitalization, I can't believe I managed to say that correctly. But you've got that there, there's a chance defeating enemies afflicted by the Cosmic Status effect will produce a temporary aura of cosmic energy, restoring willpower to any teammates within range. That's actually pretty interesting and it would be great on, for example, like a, a healing Miss Marvel character. Again, I don't like the fact that you need to apply the Cosmic Status in the first instance because when you're taking out trash, if you've got a good build, I've said that a few times now, but you probably won't get the chance to actually apply the status before you actually do take them out. But I do like the idea of this. This is interesting and it's something that changes gameplay a little bit, which is what I really want to see with perks. For the second one, dealing damage to enemies afflicted with the cosmic status effect restores a small amount of heroic energy on every hat. That's something new at least. The third one's really pretty bad. So there's a chance taking cosmic damage grants a damage buff. Now in the game at the moment you have a reactive buff which comes on your slot 3, so taking any damage will grant a damage buff. Why would you want to have a perk where you need to take a specific damage type? And as far as we're aware, with people that have done some testing, the only place where you can actually take cosmic damage is potentially in the wasteland. You don't take it anywhere else. And this is the hardest content in the game, it should be often the best perks in the game, but the reactive buff which you can get just farming your chests and snowy tundra is way better than this. So, Top perk, interesting. Bottom perk, absolute garbage. Now we actually have a, a pretty decent perk again here. So this one, it's the second perk. Similar to the 30% the damage reduction you get from all cosmic attacks. With this one here, it's a 65% chance to completely resist all damage from a cosmic attack. Once again, if loadouts come to the game, if we start getting bosses that really do a certain amount of a certain damage type, then this could be interesting. I will give them some credit where it's actually due for some of the slightly more interesting perks. So that's the majority of perks that I've been able to see so far. Now I will definitely admit there are a, a few, but it is only a few, that have the potential to be potentially interesting. But this is the hardest content in the game, you can only farm once a week. It shouldn't be a few perks could be interesting, it should be all the perks should be interesting. You should be really excited for resetting going in and actually farming something. So the biggest offenders, as mentioned, are existing perks that are already on other gear pieces you can farm much easier. or it, 
even worse than that, you've got your existing perks with added conditions on top of them as well, such as that you have to take cosmic damage to get the damage buff and so on. And then you've got the perks where you need to revive your allies, so you need to rely on your team actually doing bad before you get the benefit of the perk. My mind's just blown by a perk like that. So what should you actually be getting? So once again I'll say this is the hardest content in the game at the moment, the mega level threats. You should be excited for the perks and they should be actually game changing, they shouldn't just be stat sticks which they are in the majority of cases. So let me bring up some examples of some perks we've actually got in game at the moment. We don't have many, but we do have some perks that are actually gameplay changing and that's what I believe they should be doing for the mega level threats. So here's the first one we have here, it's the Operative's Armour, so the third perk's the really interesting one and it's one that everyone really loves. So with this it's Split and Multiply, it increases the projectiles fired by Split Shot Arrow and Splintering Fire by 2%. Yes, in a very roundabout way it is just a stack stick because it's increasing your damage, but it's actually changing visually how your character looks when they're doing attacks as well. So this is the kind of perk that I'd really be looking for on your Mega Level Threat gear. The next perk we have here is one that I always seem to discuss very often whenever I'm streaming. This always comes up as a, a, an example of how you should do perks or how perks should be done. So it's the top one, Molnir's Sight. So it states, greatly increase Molnir's ability to find targets and hit them on any return flight. So without it, you throw Molnir out, you call it back, it might hit one or two enemies at most. With this, when you call it back, let's say you've got ten enemies in front of you, it will actually bounce between all of them before it actually comes back. This is absolutely incredible want to see more perks like this. So we've got one more perk to show off here that's already in the game before we go on and we talk very quickly about that mega level threat difficulty and what they can they can do to address the, the fact that some people are finding it too easy and some people are finding it too hard. But you've got, this is on Kate Bishop, I should say it's Disruptor Extension. Increases the duration of the disruption effect on enemies by 3 seconds and reduces enemy defence by 30%. That's really unique and it means it gives her a, a role in a team in a way and that she can become a debuff character. So once again, yeah, perks like this, this is what we really do need. So that's the existing perks we've got in the Mega Level Threat. Why I feel they're underwhelming as much as I'm at one or two are slightly interesting, but the vast majority are massively underwhelming. I'm going to say one more time for the fact that it's the hardest content in the game. And there's some perks that I actually feel that they should be working towards. Let me know if you agree or do disagree. But let's go on now and let's very quickly talk about the, the difficulty in the Mega Level Threats. And let me show you a quick 20 second clip here. Right, do your work people. Big bubble you get inside. Alright, let's just see if we can just absolutely smash them. Oh, is it this here you mean it? I don't know what the audio is. I don't have the brain power at the moment to figure it out. Bloody hell, <laughs> there we go. So that's super adaptoid done. Mega level. So that was me running the Mega Level Fret with some of the boys on stream and as you can see that was 19 seconds to take down the Super Adaptoid. I've heard of some people taking like an hour to take him down. I believe Paul Tassi of Forbes actually rage crit when he was trying to fight him so it seems like the the difficulty, depending on how geared you are, really is all over the place. Now, the solution to this, and I don't know why they're not doing it, in the game at the moment you've actually got your four different difficulty levels. It's been disabled for quite some time. But what they really need to do for these Omega Level Threats, if they want newer players to be able to experience them and min-max players to be able to experience them, is make use of the challenge difficulties have it. Let's just say if you do it in challenge 1, it's going to be 140 for difficulty. If you do it on challenge 4, it'll maybe even be something like 180 for difficulty. And the gear you drop, the actual rolls on the stats will go up higher based on the actual difficulty. For me, that seems to be an absolute no-brainer. Yeah, that's the Mega Level Fret, my thoughts on the gear, my thoughts on the difficulty. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you got this far and you missed me, then let me know in the comments below as well. And I'll see you all again soon.